Alright, time for another Tuesday stream, although not product stream since Vanguard product stream is not there yet. So let's just start off with the Tuesday stream reveals, along with the Dokovan from Thursday. So for Dokovan, we're gonna start off with the new Aurora Battle Princess stuff with the first card being Aurora Battle Princess Grande Marita. Grade 1 equipment skills. Auto when placed on rear guard, choose one of your imprisoned cards, and if you chose something, you put that card to the bottom of your opponent's deck, and then they choose one grade 0 from their drop zone and imprison it. And during this turn it gets plus 5k power. So basically it's a prisoner exchange, which I don't entirely mind for replacing something good for a grade 0. Just keep in mind that this can bite you in the ass in a certain way as well depending on what matchup you have. In particular against deck that can superior call from deck. Now against those decks that use drop zone this can actually be proven useful, especially when you're getting rid of the useful stuff from your prison and then exchanging them for useless prisoners. So run this in your own leisure, although I don't think you're gonna have the room to run it. Next, Aurora Battle Princess Penetrate Aquas. Grade 3, third current skills. Auto when placed on rigor, your opponent chooses one card from the drop zone and imprison it into your prison. You know what? This is pretty good because you don't need your opponent to have a field to imprison stuff. And prison definitely needs more of this stuff. So this is already run because of this skill. But the second skill makes it better, where count rear guard guardian. You have two or more cards in prison. This card gets plus 5k power and 10k shield. And then during the battle that this card attacks, your opponent must call two cards to the Guardian Circle at the same time if they want to guard this attack. And it also lasts on your opponent's turn too. So 18k beater, that is about a Dora guard restrict, and it's also a 10k shield. Overall, it's actually not too bad. And it's definitely pretty useful in pretty much any matchup because you can use your opponent's drop zone for imprisonment and very likely pretty much every deck is going to have something in their drop zone. Guardian exists. And then to the Dragon Empire Ride Deck Fodder. That will be Hard Scale Great Fire Axe Califren. Grade 2, 10k power, and just like the other ones, auto during your ride phase when discard from hand, cost Soul Blast 1, places the bottom of the deck and draw a card. The main skill, auto, when placed on rearguard, you Persona Ride this turn, cost Count Blast 1, retire all your opponent's rearguards at the same column as this unit. Honestly, I think there are better retire options than this, but 2 retires isn't too bad, and depending on what deck you play this in, it can actually be pretty decent. But there might be be better retire options than this. And now to the Tuesday stream itself. First off, let's start off with the new Verena cards with the anime card reveal. So first off, we're going to start off with Illuminate Equip Dragon Gala Luminaire. Grade 1 AK Power and Skills. Auto, when this card becomes original dress, cost Soul Boss 1, look at top 7 cards of your deck, choose up to 2 Verenas from among them, reveal them and put them to your hand. Discard the rest and shuffle your deck. Now I don't mind this card being able to search from the top 7, in fact you could search up to 2 cards from it. My only problem is that you have to dump the rest of them to the drop zone. And Soul hasn't been too much of an issue when it comes to crossover dress because only Bavarina really uses soul, everything else is really nothing. And just searching more Varinas is definitely pretty great, especially when you're playing the Prayer of Chad version. And also in a way, gives you more of a reason to run less copies of certain Varinas. Next for the anime card reveal, Mirror's Reflection Equip Mirror's Verena. Grade 2, Tenge Power and Skills. First off, it's a regular crossover dress for a Trickstar and a Prayer Dragon. And the main skills are Auto, when placed on Rearguard by crossover dress, choose up to two cards that are Verena and put them as its original dress. This will come up for its second skill where Auto Rearguard, when this card attacks in crossover dress state, this card gets plus 10 key power to the end of that battle, then you can cost put a original dress Verena to the drop zone, and then you can perform one of these abilities, either draw a card or counter charge one. Guess what? This actually fixes Jiva. Jiva uses too much counter blast, and that counter charge is basically what you're going to do with this card, on top of being a 20k beater as well. And what's nice is that this is not once per turn, so meaning that if you restand this, you can play this skill again for another counter charge, or draw a card if you wish. So yeah, this card definitely fixes Jiva's problems practically, and because you basically put two Varinas into its original dress, well you can use this up to two times. And then when it comes to the original overdress deck, you could technically still run this with the Prayer Dragon, but then it's probably not the most consistent since you only run one Prayer Dragon, that will be probably the mirrors to let you look at top 7 for Varinas, but you can technically tech this in on the regular overdress deck for counter charging as well because it doesn't have a good way of countercharging so far. And at least that one doesn't counterblast as heavily as Jiva. So yeah, this is a really good card just to, because it just helps Jiva. Countercharge is what it needs.
And now to the festival collection stuff with the new Willista cards. First off, let's start off with full marks of Accelerating Energy, Trixie, Grade 2 Tanky Power Skills. Count Rearguard, if you play a gem card this turn, and your opponent's Vanguard is greater greater, plus 5k, okay, 15k beater for that, why not? But second skill, auto when placed on Rearguard, and your Vanguard is a Willista Grade 3, costs. Put a card from your hand to soul, look at top 5 cards of your deck, choose up to 2 Grade 3 Willistas from among them that are different names, and put them to your hand, and of course shove your deck. But if you did not put any cards, you draw a card. Few important things about this card. The first thing is that you can put a card from your hand to soul. It could be the right gem card that you want. That's important. The second thing is you basically can search for your persona ride with this. And if you do miss, you still get something. So that is pretty good right there. Obvious four of of Willista, obviously, but with the different name Willista added in with the two copies, you could technically run the both Willistas for this. I'm just not sure which one are you gonna prefer. Especially for the new Willista, Festi Magica Willista. Great. 3 13 power and skills. First off, it has the dress up ability, which basically is like the sorceress where it counts as, as the original one. In this case, it's counted as Past Magica Willista, which is of course going to be good because there's cards that only interact with that specific name. And the skill is auto when placed on Vanguard. Cost, discard a card from your hand, choose a gem card from your soul or drop zone and put to your hand. The upside of being able to recycle your gems or reuse them. But the second skill is, act Vanguard once per turn, cost, Soul Blast one gem card, and perform all the following according to the Soul Blasts for this cost. So if you Soul Blast the Everlasting Sapphire, like a top 5 cards in your deck, choose up to 2 cards from among them and call them to rear guard, and of course shuffle your deck. If you Soul Blast the Ruby, this card gets us 15k power until the end turn. The only thing is, it loses certain things from the original Willista. The original Willista has your opponent cannot intercept as well. At least you don't need to send the rest of the drop zone, like the original. But the other downside is that you can only Soul Blast one gem card per turn, which can technically be a problem if it wasn't for the next card. But before I go to the next card, this also has an extra bonus where you could reuse some of your gem cards, which is going to be very helpful. So I'm not entirely sure which one would you prefer in your ride deck. In a way, the original Willista is kind of better, while this one still has its added bonuses where it can let you reuse certain cards. Because the new gem card is Crossing Illumin Rays, which is a grade 1, and it's a normal order that is a gem, and it has a continuous skill is that during the fight it is counted as both Ruby and Sapphire, and you play it as long if your vanguard is Willista. And the skill is that you put this to soul to draw a card and then you choose one of your vanguards, until the end turn it gets plus 5 key power, and if your opponent's vanguard is grade 3 or greater, it gets this skill, where auto vanguard, when this card attacks, cost combo plus 1, soul blast a grade 3 Willista, choose one of your rearguards and stand it, and you cannot play order cards for the rest of the turn. The no more order cards for the rest of the turn is not really much of a restriction, because by the time you play this, you're very likely not going to be playing orders for the rest of the turn. The skills is not entirely the best, I do like the restand rearguard skill to give it an extra attack, but the important part is that it counts as both gems. The fact that it counts as both gems is where this card is really powerful, because of course you're going to get the full power of Willista just with one card. Now the restand part is basically just an added bonus. Lyrical does have ways to soul charge, so you do have that, but if anything, that's more of a turn 4 skill. Overall, it's not entirely too bad. What's important is that this card counts as both gems. And now before we end this off, if you guys are interested, here's Token Rambu new product. And there's definitely a new mechanic for Token Rambu as well, but I'm not going to go over this because I'm not going to give a damn about Token Rambu. So that's it for these new reveals. What do you guys think about the new Willista and the new Mirs Verena? Mirs Verena, it's just a definite need for Jiva for sure because it needs the counter charge. And with it revealed, we'll probably get something about Overdress and Cross Overdress eventually as a full on deck. Because so far it's not the most consistent thing, but there is a theming towards it and I get why. I'm just not sure how it will be functional as a good deck. And yes, we do have Chad of Prayer, but we need to see probably a new Nirvana to know why. Now to the new Willista card, I don't mind the new evolution and I do like the dress up part where it counts as the original because a lot of the cards will interact with the original when it comes to some decks. Hopefully they do this with Basagra too because the weapons definitely need it. But for the order card, it's definitely going to be very helpful because it counts as both gems. Willista needs help. But on that, that's it for this and see you all next time.